what's up everybody? It's your boy Mood616 here, and yes, I'm back with uh, shelf number three of my standard DVD uh, shelf by shelf collection, or the entire horror film collection overview, or however you want to put it. Um, so basically from here on out, every odd shelf now is going to be just a shorter video, as the way I've done my collection, as you guys can see, you know, I started with those, and then from that second shelf, it comes over into this area. So as you can see, the shelves are a lot smaller and then they just continue in sequence. So yeah, so you know, this is part three, part four will be longer and then part five will be short and so on and so on. Um, so yeah, without further ado, uh, let's get into this. Before we get into this though, I'm gonna say, if you guys are looking forward to another 1990 what video, the video is going to be posted tomorrow. And then I'll probably post up the other, like, shelf number four, probably on Sunday or Monday or something like that. So be on the lookout for those videos. And yeah, let's get right into this. Continuing along into the seas here, uh, we got Carriers. This was actually surprisingly a pretty decent uh, kind of infection film. Um, for a PG-13 horror film, I actually thought it was pretty entertaining. It wasn't bad. Uh, Carver. Really good slasher film, actually. This is one that really surprised me complete blind buy and it was pretty gory not like overly the most insane story like you know like a lot of slasher films but uh it's got some really good gore it got some really decent memorable kills to that one it's pretty good stuff uh casadega i enjoyed this one i thought this one was pretty decent i know this one got a lot of hate but i thought it was actually pretty decent uh what do we got here castle of the walking dead uh this one is such a bad transfer i'm trying to remember exactly when this one came out i can't remember um but yeah, this is one of those like really cheap DVDs. <laughs> Needs a better release. Uh, we got Catacombs here. Uh, not really the greatest film in the world. Sorry about the glare, guys. Uh, yeah, it was okay. It wasn't bad. Then we got the original Cat People and the Curse of the Cat People. Um, of course, the classic Cat People. I like the I, you know the sequel of Curse of the Cat People is pretty cool too, man. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, and then Cat People remake uh, with Natasha Kinski, Malcolm McDowell. Very trippy, totally kind of different uh, take on the story. Um, I do have this on Blu-ray too. I keep this DVD because this one actually has a commentary that's not on the Screen Factory Collector Edition Blu-ray, which is so strange. Um, and uh, yeah, so Cat People, pretty interesting film though. Uh, we actually, me and JP, we actually did both these, um, the Cat People verse, you know, OG verse remake on the podcast. Uh, it's actually a show that he hates. <laughs> so. Uh, next up here is The Cavern. Um, yeah, it wasn't really the greatest. It was alright, though. It had its moments, but eh, it's okay. Cemetery Gates. This is one that I absolutely love. I love this film. Um, really fantastic stuff. What a Tasmanian Devil. It's fucking gore fest, man. So many good kills. So much gore in this one. Awesome stuff. Recommended that one to a lot of people. Uh, Jennifer Lopez in The Cell. Uh, good film. Actually, a really, really decent film. If you've never seen it, check it out. Um, I know this one has a Blu-ray release. Uh, the Cell 2, which I've actually, in fact, never seen. I've never watched this before. I've never heard really anything good about it, so it's kind of always been kind of on the back. But I'll watch it someday, though. Uh, the Cellar Door. Uh, this is one of those type of... Um, the Girl Next Door isn't there anymore. Yeah, uh, this is one of those films, you know, where someone gets abducted and shit's happening to them and, you know, in the cellar. Uh, it's not a bad film. You know, it's a little tedious to watch. It's not, like, amazing. It's not terrible or anything. It's kind of in between, but it's definitely worth a watch, though, if you're into those type of films. It's pretty nasty. Uh, Central State Asylum for the Insane. Um, I don't really, really remember this one too much. <laughs> I won't lie. It's been a while since I've seen that one. So, uh, then we got Georgie Scott in The Changeling. Uh, such a fantastic film. Such a fantastic film. An amazing ghost story. If you've never seen The Changeling, you gotta check it out. It's one of the best ones. It really is. So good. Uh, I can't believe that one doesn't have a Blu-ray release. It's hard to believe, actually. Uh, Chain Letter. Ah, decent, decent film. Again, maybe above average type story. Um, I, I do like the idea of the whole Chain Letter death thing and stuff. It's pretty interesting. Got Bat Brad Dourif in it. Pretty cool. Keith David's in it. That's awesome. Uh, the Chair, I believe I reviewed this one on the podcast, actually, or not on the podcast, on one of my last reviews on Body Bags or something, I don't know. Uh, again, a decent story, it's got pretty good atmosphere and stuff, it gets a little jumbled towards the end and stuff, but uh, overall it wasn't actually that bad of a watch, it was low budget, but it was okay. Um, Chainsaw Killer, uh, this is a uh, John Polonia film, <laughs> Polonia Brothers film, uh, 
Man, dude, you know, if you're familiar with the Polony, with the Polony Brothers, you know what you're going to get with, you know, their films are very, very low budget. They're notorious for their 80 shot on video films and stuff. This one, um, very low budget, pretty fun. I actually, there was parts in this that had me laughing pretty good, but I'm a fan of this stuff, so it's not for everybody. Don't recommend it to everyone. Uh, Chaws, man, man, this movie, I, I'm glad I went back and watched the rest of this film. <laughs> it's a funny ass film, man. It's like a Korean uh, kind of creature features this killer boars, man. It's, it's like got this really offbeat comedy to it and shit. And it's really funny. Actually. It had me laughing like right from the start of the film throughout it. Good film though. Check out Shaw's. It's awesome. Really fun stuff. Uh, then we got chaos. This one right here is pretty much a remake of last house on the left. It's the exact same story. It's just really low budget and not as good as Wes Craven's last house on the left. Um, but it's pretty brutal and violent, and, you know, I do recommend it, though. I actually did enjoy this one for what it was. Uh, it's nothing we haven't seen before, but it's pretty good. It was pretty good. Uh, next up here is Charlie's Farm, an Aussie slasher film that I really enjoyed from, I believe, last year. Yeah, last year had some really, really good slasher films. This is one of them. Uh, I hope they make a sequel to this. I hope they keep making these, because, to be honest, I was I really like The Killer, man. Um, Bill Mosley, Kane Hodder. Uh, Nathan Jones and Tara fucking Reed. God, she was so ugly in this film, too. Uh, she was pretty much the only part of the film I didn't really care for. I thought her acting was horrible, but, you know, as for the whole film, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, Cheap Thrills. Man, what a fantastic, fantastic film. Uh, this is one I would actually like to get on Blu-ray. So these fucking Draft House releases are so expensive in Canada. It's ridiculous. Um, what's his name? Pat Healy. Oh, my God. It's just so amazing in this film. He's so good. Um... Sarah Paxson, Ethan Ambry, oh, good stuff, man. It's such a fun film. Not going to say anything else about it, just watch it. It's so much fun. Uh, Cheerleader Massacre. This one right here is kind of like an offshoot to the Slumber Party Massacre, I believe. Uh, Brink Stevens actually makes an appearance in this film, and she plays the same character that she did in Slumber Party Massacre, which was... I don't know, 20 years before, but she does play the same character, so that's her connection to Slumber Party Massacre. This one right here is directed by Jim Warnowski. Uh, it's really, really bad. <laughs> it's a really low-budget crap film. It's crazy the difference in quality of Jim Warnowski films throughout his career. Like, he's done some really good stuff, which we'll actually get to one of his film, one of his better films here in a minute. And uh, this one right here is just that early 2000s low, low budget, like micro budget shit. And it's, it's, it's actually so bad. It's pretty funny to watch actually, but, uh, Cherry Falls. Um, I do have this on Blu-ray. I'm going to keep the DVD cause it's a region two and it's just really kind of hard to pawn off these sometimes. And a lot of people have the region free players, but kind of dig the artwork on this. I think it's pretty cool. Um, but I, I really enjoy this, man. This was a good slasher film with Brittany Murphy, Jay Moore. Good stuff though, man. Good stuff. Check out the Blu-ray. It's pretty cool. Uh, Cherry Tree Lane. I think this was... I want to say, was this a British home invasion film? I'm pretty sure it was British. I, I fucking can't even remember if it was or not. I want to say it was. Um, it was horrible. This was one of the worst uh, home invasion films I've ever seen. So the dialogue was pissing me off to the point where I was getting mad. Actually, somebody asked me in my Q&A video, what was a movie that really got you mad while watching? Well, here's another answer. Cherry Tree Lane. This movie sucked. It sucked. You're probably asking why you still have in the collection. I don't know. I should probably get rid of that. It's really, really bad. Uh, Chicago Massacre, Richard Speck, the Richard Speck story, of course. This was not bad. I mean, this has been, the story has been done a bunch of times. I actually do like this story. And I'm, I've always been enthralled by, you know, real life serial killer stories and things like that. So I always like the takes on them. So it was decent though. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, the Children. This is a really fantastic Christmas kind of related horror film about these children that start going nuts and basically killing off their parents and shit. Uh, really cool snowy setting out in the country in a very isolated area and shit. It's really good, man. I, I highly recommend The Children. Such a great film. Children of the Corn uh, 2 and 3. Um, <laughs> you're probably going, where's Children of the Corn 1? It's in the Anchor Bay collection. Uh, Children of the Corn 2 and 3. Um, yeah, you know, uh, I'm not honestly a big fan of Children of the Corn 2. I actually like Children of the Corn 3 more, which is not really the popular opinion. Um or the consensus, but I don't think Children of Corn, well, actually, no, I do think Children of Corn is a better film, to be honest. I do like it more also. I like the urban setting of it, just, it's bizarre. Children of Corn 2 is almost too silly. I just, I think it's a bad sequel that does have a little bit, it, it, you know, it kind of corresponds with the first one, but I don't know. I, I just don't really care for it over that much. Children of the Corn 4, um, 
Yeah, this one right here. I actually kind of enjoy this film. This one right here introduces Naomi Watts. Naomi Watts, um, Karen Black's in this one. I actually really enjoy the story of this. It's not like the greatest film or anything, but it actually has a pretty decent story. Um, I, I know we are very, very split on this one on the podcast, but, uh, you know, I actually kind of enjoy it. Children of the Corn 5. An absolute abomination. This movie sucks, man. It's like a straight-up slasher film. Pretty much. Uh, it's got Alexis Arquette in it. Um... Uh, Fred Williamson makes an appearance in this film actually too, and Eva Menendez. It's like an early role for Eva Menendez in it too, and it's really bad. It's fucking terrible actually. It's, uh, speaking of bad Children of the Corn sequels, Children of the Corn Six 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 Isaac's Return. Of course, Isaac from the original Children of the Corn. Uh, this is such a mumbled jumbled piece of crap film. It's so bad. This is the worst one in the franchise, in my opinion. I think this one got like. Man, it made the Hall of Pain in our in our podcast, so it's it's really bad. <laughs> Got to see it though. Children of the Corn Revelations Part Seven. Now, most people would instantly just write this film off as being terrible. This one actually is, you know, as a film, it's actually pretty decent. As a Children of the Corn sequel, it's terrible, but but then again, none of the films really have any full blown correlation to the original one. But this one has a really good atmosphere. It's got a pretty interesting setup to and stuff um if this one was just called revelation it would actually be a pretty decent film so i don't know give it a shot uh then we got children of the court genesis this one i'm not really very big on it either actually another extreme dimension one um i'm finding these all over the collection here's another one without the thing on the side that's why uh but um yeah, I don't really dig this one, man. Not really a big fan. And the biggest surprise out of the whole franchise is Children of the Corn remake. Now, I know a lot of people wrote this one off. TV remake, they're like, no, this, that's junk. This one actually is pretty decent. It has a lot of the same elements as the original film, and it kind of brings some other things to it, too. It's not a bad film. I mean, in comparison to the rest of the franchise, it's definitely one of the better ones. I know that's hard to say. Maybe it doesn't have much ground to stand on because of that reason, but... In my opinion, it's pretty good. Um, Children of the Corn uh, shouldn't play with dead... Children of the Corn. What the... F okay, seriously. Children shouldn't play with dead things. Uh, Bob Clark's first film. Of course, famous for directing Black Christmas, Death Dream, and, you know, among uh, other films. Um, yeah, this one I need to upgrade to Blu-ray. Just the, It's so damn expensive here. But uh, I, I love this film. I love this film. Bad transfer on this VCI edition, but the cart works fucking awesome. But yeah, it, it's a fun film. Very, very low budget. Children of the Living Dead. Now, this movie right here, I know I've heard from a lot of people say it's dubbed as like one of the worst films ever. This one is so bad that I actually find it kind of entertaining. Um, I don't know why. It's just, it's so bad it's good to me. It's really bad, but... I don't know. There's something odd about this one that I just... I can't pinpoint why I like it, but it's okay. Uh, Chill. This is a Lovecraft story. Um, you know, this one right here has its moments. It's got uh, Thomas Cala Calabaro in it. He was the guy from uh, Melrose Place. <laughs> That's what I know him from because I was a big fan. Ashley Lawrence is in this film too. Um, of course, we know who she is from. Yeah, it, it falls pretty flat. It's pretty low budget. It's... It, <sighs> It's not the worst thing in the world, but man, H.P. Lovecraft films should be getting more love than this, really. Wes Craven's Chiller. Now, this movie, uh, public domain, I believe, it, it's never really had a great release. Someone needs to pick this up and actually give it the, the you know, transfer that it deserves, the love that it deserves, because it's just getting nothing. Um, it's, not a, it's not a great, great film. I think this film he actually did right after Nightmare on Elm Street, which is so fucked up when you really put it into context, because... The production value between Nightmare on Elm Street 1 and, and, or the first one, and Chiller is on a completely different level. Obviously, he didn't really have a budget for this, but man, you wouldn't even believe it's the same filmmaker, but yeah. Chillerama anthology film. Really like this one, man. Uh, four shorts directed by Adam Green, Joe Lynch, Adam Rifkin, and Tim Sullivan. Good stuff. Good stuff. Check out Chillerama. It's really good. Chinese ghost story. Bizarre bizarre and bizarre that's all i can say about this i mean if you're familiar with this film you know exactly what i'm talking about it's it's really really strange uh it's got a lot of supernatural kung fu uh it's crazy i love this film man it's really fun choking hazard i can't remember where this film is actually from it's it's foreign oh this is another fangoria film i could probably put this in my fangoria collection um 
I'm finding shit all over the place right now. See, this is I'm, it's good that I'm doing this shelf by shelf. Uh, it's funny though, man. I always thought this guy on the cover looked like John Lithgow. It's funny. Pretty honestly, I think some of the comedy will get lost in translation due to the subtitles, but it was pretty funny to me. Uh, then we got Choppy Mall, which of course I just recently picked up on Blu-ray um, from Vestron. This one's signed from Jim Warnowski, spelt my name wrong, M-O-O-D-S, that's fine. He even apologized after he goes, oops, I put an S after I told him Z. Come on. Uh, Choppy Mall, you know, fun stuff. One of Jim Warnowski's best films. Uh, Christine, another film I do have on Blu-ray, but I keep this one because it just has a story behind it. I'm not going to get into it, but uh, I actually really like the cover art on this too. It's cool. Uh, Christmas Cruelty, this one was sent to me uh, from a homie from the Facebook group. Uh, pretty actually interesting film. I really enjoyed this one. It's, Nor it's like a Norwegian Killer Santa Claus type film. I enjoyed it. Low budget. Uh, I, I know some people, ooh, caught that. Didn't really care for it, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, Christmas Horror Story. Um, I thought this one was really fantastic. Uh, for whatever reasons, we didn't get a Blu ray release in Canada here, so I just grabbed the DVD because it was actually quite cheap. So, but yeah, Christmas Horror Story. Good stuff. Uh, Christmas Nightmare. This one I have actually still not watched. Um, I was going to watch it actually this Christmas, never got around to it, but I'm not even sure what this is. Picked this one up randomly, I don't know, on a whim, so still need to watch that one. Uh, Circulation. I have seen this film, but for whatever reasons, it, the whole story is escaping me. I can't remember what this one is about. So, And same with this one, Circle of Eight. I don't know what it is, but I'm blanking on these two films right now. I don't know. Maybe I haven't seen it. Maybe I'm just lying. I don't know. Uh, Citadel. This was a film that actually grew on me quite a bit. Uh, when I first watched it, I thought it was good, decent. But then I watched it again, and I thought it was really good. It's very creepy and atmospheric, and it's got a really f interesting story to it and stuff. Um, I think it's a British film. Pretty, pretty fucking cool stuff, actually. Uh, Chocolate Strawberry Vanilla. Um, I've recommended this film to pretty much everyone. <laughs> I love this movie, man. It's a character study of this this ice cream, uh, this ice cream dude here, and just how he just descends into madness and shit. I love this movie. It's so good, so good. Uh, Chubbies, man. Uh, if you guys ever watch my videos, the sunglasses I wear are actually from this movie, the blue or the green and the orange pair. About these little alien creatures that crawl up your butthole, and that's how they that's how they breed and shit. And it takes place on Halloween and in a bowling alley and shit. It's fucking awesome. It's fun, low budget shit. Chud Two, another film. Do you have on Blu-ray? But this is a Region Two DVD, and you know, kind of stuck with it. But I do like the cover art on this. It's very cool. So, not really my favorite film in the world, though. Uh, Chupacabra, Chupapacra, <laughs> dare fuck. Um, I just got this one and still haven't watched it yet, so I need to check that out. Citizen X, man, I love this movie, man. This is a great uh, television horror film uh, based on this Russian, real life Russian serial killer, which his name escapes me right now. Uh, with Stephen Ray, Donald Sutherland. It's just a brutal story, man. This guy was fucking ill, man. He killed a lot of people, man. Eight years, 52 victims. Yeah, he was a fucked up dude, man. Good story, though. It's been, the story's been done a couple times. Evil Inko is another one that's the same story. Uh, class of 1999, Region 2 DVD. And this is one right here that I'm really surprised that uh, doesn't have a better release. I'm, I'm probably assuming that Vastron's probably going to put this out on Blu-ray considering it is Lionsgate, so, you know, maybe we'll see if we read it in the future. It's a good movie. Uh, speaking of another or good films, The Clinic, man. Here's one I really enjoyed. This is an Aussie film with a pretty cool story inspired by true events. Kind of nasty shit, man. You kind of pretty much know what you're getting yourself into with this one with The Clinic. Maybe you don't, but uh, no, it's good. It's good stuff. Uh, Clockwork Orange. Yes, it's in the horror collection. It's kind of a scary, freaky fucking movie, man. Um... I love it, man. Malcolm McDowell just kills this role. I love this movie, man. Kubrick, it's just such a strange take on, you know, ultra violence and curing it, and it's just kind of ahead of its time and stuff, and everyone knows about Clockwork Orange. It's not nothing new. Um, Close Your Eyes. This is a film from 2002 that I, in my opinion, is super, super underrated. Probably just overlooked. I don't think people have really even heard of it before. Uh, this one actually got two thumbs up from from Ebert Roper. That's crazy um, that they enjoyed this as much as I did. It's fantastic. It's a really damn good film. Gotta check it out sometime. I highly recommend it. 
Cloverfield, everyone knows about this one. I enjoy this film. I hated it when I first seen it, actually, to be honest. I, I was just not in the mood, I think, for watching a found footage film that kind of made me nauseous a little bit, but uh, no, I, I grew to like this film. I think it's pretty good for what it is. Clown Town, on the other hand, not really the greatest film. This one just has such a stupid story to it, and there's, there's things that aren't explained in it that... I wish they had have explained because it probably would have made it a little better why there's these clowns that are running this deserted town. And just the way they got these people, they lured in these people. Here's a, you know, there's that chick again, you know, from Absentia. Fuck that cover, man. It's everywhere. Uh, <laughs> sorry, but um, yeah, I didn't really care for Clown Town. I thought it was pretty, pretty bad, actually. Uh, Club Dread, yes, in the horror section. Uh, <laughs> dude, these guys are so funny. Bro broken Lizards are hilarious shit, man, but... Um, yeah, fun stuff, man. It, you know, it's co it's comedy horror. I wouldn't even say it's horror, it's comedy horror, but it's fun. Everyone's seen it before. Uh, Cold in July, yeah, my revenge films I put into here, you know, they're like this, but this is really good, man. Um, uh, Michael C. Hall, just so good in this film. I love these revenge films, they're great, great stuff. Cold Prey, love Cold Prey. I do prefer Cold Prey 2. Still never seen Cold Prey 3, Cold Prey 3 because of the fucking non uh english versions that are out there but yeah good stuff cold prey is awesome part two i think is even better but uh yeah which is actually in my shell factory collection so uh colin here's a very very low budget zombie film i think they made this one for like five thousand dollars or some shit i can't remember the story behind this one but you know for what it was it was okay i mean it's not mind-blowing but it was decent zombie stuff <clears throat> the collector um yeah love this man i thought this film was actually pretty good really good stuff um you know i even thought the sequel the collect or the the collection yeah was really good too man so yeah good stuff man uh, i'm surprised that they actually haven't made more of these considering just you know what they are color from the dark this is an italian film uh and this director right here which i always seem to forget his name ivan zuikon uh, he really likes to do his H.P. Lovecraft films. I have a few films by this guy, and he likes to take these H.P. Lovecraft stories. This was good, man. I actually really enjoyed this one. Thought it was some really good stuff. I thought, like, the weakest part of the film, like I said before, was probably Debbie Roshan's performance in this one, but it's very atmospheric and very strange, and good stuff. I, I enjoy it, man. If you like H.P. Lovecraft, you know what you're getting yourself into a little bit. Come and get me. Uh, don't even have a clue. I can't remember this film for the life of me. Um... I mean, it says, like, Last House on the Left meets Once We Were Warriors. I don't know how to interpret that, to be honest, but... Uh, compliance. Now, here is a movie. Again, watching this is probably the most frustrating movie ever made in the history of cinema. If you've seen Compliance, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is a true story. Basically about a guy that phones up this fast food joint and gets this girl to do all this insanely crazy shit over the phone. It's fucked up, the shit that happens in this movie. This is literally one of the most disturbing stories i've ever seen it's not gory or anything like that it's just infuriating to watch this movie it's so infuriating it's so good check out compliance it's awesome loved it uh compound fracture with tyler main Derek mirrors um this one i thought was decent you know it was getting a lot of shit reviews and stuff and i actually kind of enjoyed this one for what it was it had some it had some moments it wasn't the greatest but it was uh the conduit now, this one I did review. I did a full-length review of this one on my channel. This one had a pretty cool idea and stuff. I think it felt a, fell a little bit short of the mark. It got a little bit jumbled. I think the ending kind of hurt this one a little bit, but the story was there. It's th the story was there, but, you know, decent enough anyways. Congo. Yeah, killer apes, whatever you want to call them. I like this movie, man. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, it is what it is. And then we got Conspiracy from Cobb. This one, really good, interesting. It's an interesting story, you know, conspiracy theories and shit like that. Uh, I know a lot of people kind of harped on the ending a little bit, but, you know, I can see where they're coming from on that one for sure. And the last film on this little shelf here is Conspiracy Encounters, another film I did a full-length review for. Now, from what I've heard from other people is nothing. I have never heard anyone else ever mention this film. No one's ever talked about this. I think I was, I think when I reviewed this film, there wasn't even a review on IMDb or anything. I couldn't find any information on this film whatsoever when I did it. It was very strange. And uh, it's a pretty 
interesting story. It's kind of got like these corresponding stories in it and stuff. And just check out the review. I thought it was pretty interesting. Definitely, probably not for everybody. I think even the owner of um, of Midnight Releasing didn't even really care for this one, and they put this out. But I actually thought it was pretty decent. It's 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 a little more complex than it probably should have been. But you know, it's it's interesting stuff. So. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for shelf number three, guys. We'll be moving on to shelf number four. Um, you know, I'll have that up in a couple days for you guys. So yeah, this one's a little bit shorter. Wow, still 25 minutes. Sorry <laughs> for how short this was. But anyways, guys, um, I'll check you guys later. And stay tuned for that uh, 1990 What video episode two that's coming up tomorrow. It's going to be a cool one. So um, yeah, anyways, guys, as usual, peace.